All right, greetings everybody and welcome back. I think we got all three of our panelists on here. I saw Bob on here, Alberto's on here. Do we have Nadav on there as well? I think I see him somewhere. Yep. Okay, welcome everybody. Happy New Year to the three of you. Great to see you all. And uh, oh my gosh, we're having so much fun today. I don't know, I had my hat and my my crown and my happy new year stuff all going. I was going to light sparklers and get it going this morning. I guess I just had too much caffeine. I'm not sure, but happy new year to all of you and uh, friends forever. So thank you for joining. If you didn't see the first part, we had system integrators come on, Kindrel and EY. We then had three CISOs come on, give a kind of a budget view and a threat view. You just heard from three of the most interesting Wall Street analysts, mostly covering public company stocks. In this session, I really want to talk about early stage. I want to talk about founding new cyber companies early stage, where there is a lot of activity and a lot of positive activity that's happening in the cyber ecosystem. I started off talking about 19 billion of cyber investments through the third quarter. That's a momentum cyber stat. We probably reached almost 25 billion of investments a record year in 2022 again, especially in the early stage. So let's start out and have you guys introduce yourself. Nadav, I see you on there. We introduce where you come from as well and what you're doing with Teammate today. Hey, thanks for thanks for having me. Great to see all the friends here. Uh, hi, Bob. Hi, Alberto. Great yeah. to see you, brothers. Um, you know, I, I, first of all, I'm in the other side. So I'm, <laughs> I'm in Tel Aviv right now um where um you know we just celebrated uh, uh the, the new years as well and um you know looking forward to uh uh to this year i think it's uh, it's going to be quite interesting and actually for early stage i think it's going to be uh actually uh some tailwinds sort of counter uh counterintuitive my job is i lead the cyber pod at uh, at teammate i'm one of the partners um and uh um we are ultra early so our model is to build from scratch uh, and based on that model, we've built 12 cyber companies so far, um, and we are continuing to do this. The, the environment, in some ways, is a tailwind for us, and, and I can talk about that later. Yeah, Nadab, thank you for your service, by the way. And um, I know you formerly ran the Israeli Defense Force 8200 unit. For those who don't know that, that's sort of the NSA equivalent in the United States. And uh, Brigadier General Nadav Safir, what an honor to work with you. Thank you for all your service and stuff. And congratulations on building some amazing companies as well. And I'm really jealous. It's probably 85 degrees Fahrenheit in Tel Aviv, or maybe even more right now. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Over to you, Bob Ackerman. I know you've been investing in cyber, maybe even had the first ever cyber fund since 1996 or so. You've seen just about everything. Maybe introduce yourself and Allegiant Cyber for a minute too. Yeah, I appreciate that, David. It's good to see all my friends here. Um, yeah, so Bob Ackerman, um, you know, uh, as Dave indicated, we've been investing in cyber, I guess, coming up on 23 years now. And uh, Allegiant Cyber became uh, the first dedicated cyber venture firm in the world, raised the first uh, dedicated cyber venture funds in the world. So we've been at it for a while. I wear a couple of hats. Uh, number one is the founder of Allegiant Cyber. Uh, we're classically early stage cybersecurity focused purely. Also the co-founder of Data Tribe, uh, which we describe as our foundry uh, located in Maryland, uh, uh, where we start cyber companies. So we basically start uh, three cyber companies a year, typically with teams coming out of national intelligence uh, with a bias towards either deep data science related security or offensive teams and applying their expertise to building defensive countermeasures. And over at Data Tribe, we've started 18 companies now at this point in time. And, uh, you know, it's, it's all cyber all the time. And uh, we partner very closely with Dave and the Night Dragon team. Uh, we've got a uh, basically a federated platform that collectively gives us the ability to, to invest at any stage in terms, including the concept stage, uh, all the way through early stage and growth uh, up into pre-IPO. Thank you, Bob. Great to see you. Where are you calling in from today? I got to ask. Jackson, Wyoming. Jackson, Wyoming. We got everywhere today. Jackson, Wyoming, Tel Aviv. Alberto, thank you for joining as well, my friend. Uh, we've known each other a long time as well. In fact, we served on the University of San Francisco board together, which I really enjoyed working with you on that. Congratulations on all your success co-founding ForgePoint as well. 
I know you've done one or two cyber investments or one or 200 <laughs> cyber investments as well. Introduce yourself if you would. Hey, thank you, David, for putting the tribe together. You know, it's an honor to be with all of you. And there's a lot of work. It takes a village, like you say. And uh, I'm honored part to, to be part of this. Uh, you know, I'm one of the co-founders of Forgepoint, relatively young franchise, 2015, when Don Dixon and myself decided that we wanted to focus in, on cyber. And um, we raised two funds to date. Um, and uh, we just uh, did our first close in our third fund. We have over a billion dollars in ma under management. And uh, we have invested in 44 companies to date. Uh, last year alone, I think we exited eight. Uh, and, you know, the work still, the, the bulk of the work still be done. It's, it's, uh, it's amazing to see everyone's perspective about what the industry is, is leaving for us, is, is giving us an opportunity to contribute. It's, this is impact investment at its best, right? Because, uh, you know, we're protecting the digital future. We're trying to, to protect the, the way we live. And I think, uh, the, just, the best is yet to come. So thanks for the opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. Where are you today, Alberto? Tell me somewhere it's fun. East Bay. East Bay like you. I'm in, in Pleasanton. So <laughs> <laughs> probably underwater right about now, are you? <laughs> not yet. Not yet. Not yet. I think it's coming. It's coming. I want to really get at in this session, like what's the newest trends? What things are we going to be seeing in the next five years? You know, Nadav and Bob and Alberto, you guys have built some amazing companies. You know, five years later, these are 100 million revenue companies going, getting ready to go public. I mean, you three of all people I know really understand kind of the, the you know, like the start of companies and the threats and the cyber. So maybe start with you, Bob, just for a minute, um, if you can. What couple of areas do you see that are just like, you know, like burgeoning new markets that we as community should pay attention to. And then I'll ask the others as well. You know, look, Dave, I, I think that, uh, you know, and Nadav, you're going to resonate with this. I think one of the interesting things about cyber is unlike almost any other area of technology driven innovation, offense paces innovation in cybersecurity. Um, you know, the bad guys wake up every day thinking about new ways to take advantage of infrastructure. Uh, to discover vulnerabilities, to exploit those vulnerabilities. So when, when we think about the future of cyber innovation, we take our cues from where are the offensive playbooks going? And it's, it's one of the reasons that Data Tribe exists and that, that offense to defense model. And so when I think about that today, the, you know, uh, yeah, I'm, 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 gonna, I'm gonna throw industrial in there just because I think it's so damn early in terms of where industrial is going. Uh, and, uh, you know, we've been at that for five or six years. And when we started it five or six years ago, it was with a, with a, a company called uh, Dragos, a team out of the NSA, that were an offensive team. And, and frankly, the conventional wisdom within the venture community was, yeah, nobody's ever made money in industrial. Uh, and, and that was largely an accurate statement. Our, our contention was cyber is going to change everything you thought you knew about industrial, which has turned out to, to be the case. If I, if I look forward a little bit more, uh, and I look at where offensive playbooks are going. Um, I think about countermeasures to weaponized artificial intelligence. Uh, you know, we think about AI from a defensive perspective uh, and closing the skill gap. I think that's all accurate, but we have not really contemplated weaponized artificial intelligence and what that's going to mean. And, and frankly, uh, our defenses as they exist today are wholly inadequate to stand up against uh, that kind of a threat. I also think weaponized data. Uh, is something that uh, it is an area where, again, from an offensive perspective, um, you know, what happens, you know, in a data-driven economy, which is where we are today with this digitization process, we depend upon the data for basically everything that we do. Our systems, our decision-making, the foundations upon which our businesses operate, that implies a level of trust in that data. If that data is compromised. Uh, you know, how do we detect it? How, what trust do we have in our systems? What confidence do we have in our systems? Uh, and I, I think we're going to see a, a lot of activity in that area. You know, people talk about deep fakes. That's just that's just the the camel's nose under the edge of the tent. That's just the very beginning. Uh, but if you sit down and you talk to folks like Bloomberg, who distribute financial information digitally, it autom many times it feeds automated trading systems that trade at the speed of light. How do you trust the data? And boy, you get a, you, you, the reaction you get is not an encouragement. So those are three areas that I think about 
uh, industrial, weaponized artificial intelligence, defense against it, and weaponized data. Well, great insights, by the way. Um, when DJ Bellini was talking from Google DeepMind, you know, AI expert at Google, and, you know, you could hear it in his voice talking about AI offensive worries and what's going on, both on defense, trying to keep up with offensive AI, but maybe how much of a lead's happening there. So, you know, good point there. Nadav, maybe over to you as well. You've started a lot of companies. You're starting them every day as well. You know, what are you seeing? Biggest, biggest new things coming. Yeah, you know, I love what Alberto said about impact investing. You know, I never thought of it. Uh, but this is impact investing. You know, the world, uh, they're, they're, you know, where, where, what kind of a world do we get into in 23? On the one hand, which is good for innovators, the pace of change of technology is just accelerating. You know, I tell leaders in, and CEOs and boards, if you think the world has moved fast and digital transformation has changed your industry, embrace for impact because it's just about to accelerate. It's about to accelerate because AI has become commoditized. Uh, it's going to accelerate because of 5G, which is already commoditized and changes everything at edge compute, et cetera. But it's also going to change because our lives are changing. You know, our health systems are changing. Uh, automotive is changing. EVs are out there for energy is changing forever. And then the other impact um, is, is anti-globalization, right? Uh, we, uh, a lot of the companies that we build and most of the founders that we speak to uh, have been accustomed to a world that is getting more prosperous and more globalized. That's over. Uh, we're in a, de in a, you know, there's a multipolarized world that we're walking into. People have to choose their sides. I personally believe that once there is some kind of resolution to the war in Ukraine, I think the Russians are going to go to the tool set and the first tool that they're going to find there, the most effective, efficient tool they're going to find there is cyber. So on the one hand, acceleration of digital transformation. On the other hand, I think cyber offense, uh, um, as Bob said, if we look at that, we see more we, we see more countries with more capabilities, with more motivation uh, in a more deep in a, in a depolarized world. So if, and, and then the other part of the framework is the economy, right? I mean, this is uh, uh, the, 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 the economy of growth, 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 um, zero interest uh, uh, and abundance of capital is over. So we have to look at all these three uh, uh, working forces um, that are not about cyber and see where to apply cyber. And the way we look at it is in T2, T5 and T10 in a time frame, right? Ne what's happening in the next two years? What's happening in the next five years? What's going to happen in the next 10 years? So if we look at it from that, from the, the sort of exogenous, exogenous forces and at the time frame, what I would say for T2, I agree with Bob, I think industrial IoT, um, you know, and it, 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 the fact that Data Tribe is very similar to Team 8, you know, we start companies based on our understanding of, uh, of what the offense is doing. How can we best protect? So for T2, I totally agree. Um, and you know we we are uh, uh, you know we can we can compete and agree and and find ways to collaborate and that's what we've been doing in the last decade or so. Um, that's for T two for T five. Uh, I would I would say cloud and automation. Um, although you know cloud remains an area where it's we still haven't solved it. And when you bake in the constraints the constraints of the economy, everything will need to be automated. Uh, we won't have analysts and SOC personnel uh, on the role, on role, so we have to automate it. And then for T10, I think we need to start thinking about confidential computing in a world where the probability of quantum computing goes up. Um, and I personally think zero trust is not the right way to approach it. I think we should go beyond trust. Uh, and this is where new kinds of encryption, like homomorphic encryption and other P pets uh, are going to become very abundant. So in those three time frames, I would say OT, IoT for the next couple of years, cloud as, as, as we put more and more of our uh, information there and it changes to edge compute, et cetera. And then further down the road, uh, uh, we, we need to find confidential compute capabilities.
Nadav and Bob, congratulations on the companies you've built. I mean, seriously, amazing now that we're sitting here. You know, Nadav, your company, Clarity, Dragos as well. These companies, I mean, what are we, 5% penetrated in industrial control systems right now? I mean, you have <laughs> $100 million revenue companies. These are mega, mega companies coming. So great work. And I resonate with everything you're saying on cloud and data weaponry. And I like what you said about, you know, sort of this next generation zero trust. I, I really think you guys are thinking it. I know you. anybody wants to check out Allegis's and teammates profile, you should, because that's the future of what's going on. But not to, not to not underscore Alberto as well, because you've got an amazing portfolio as well. Alberto, Talk from your perspective on what you're seeing as well with new trends and new tech. Very consistent to what we all talk and even the prior panelists. I would say four areas in a world of shift everywhere, like you label it, David. I think we're not, we're, we did the movement to shift left. I think we're doing the shift up. What do we mean by that? We live in a multi-cloud hybrid environment. And what the Nadal said, we're just beginning the penetration of cloud. It's not like we're gonna dictate, I'm not gonna be with one flavor or the other. Those are gonna be dictated by the applications we're gonna use. So we're gonna be using Amazon, Google, we're gonna be using Microsoft and Oracle, IBM, who, who knows? And as a practitioner, you're gonna to have to have the visibility and put the, apply the appropriate controls in order to you know, secure that environment. So we still, in the, in the early innings of managing, automating, and getting the right visibility in the cloud. So that shift up model. We have a company called Optics that had, you know, started with uh, the, the world of how do you automate uh, and, and deal with all these servers with Facebook and all the, the digital natives. But now they apply that same knowledge and try to bring analytics to be able to do that. So it's an endpoint that things through on, on the server ends, the containers, um, to be able to deal with that, but it has to be in a multi-cloud environment. That's one. Um, the second one is um, when we talk about AI, you know, everybody talks about responsible AI, ethical AI, we're beginning to see uh, a verticalization of AI, right? Or, or analytics and talk about ransomware. The, the cyber insurance world continues to be in upheaval, right? You see all ransomware and the fact that every insurance company underwrote cyber policies that were completely underwater. So we need to continue to apply not only AI analytics, predictive analytics to be able to do that. Everybody said, we can do it ourselves. We can consolidate that data, but it's not that easy. You need to bring a, a, a lot of context to be able to do that. So we continue to double down in that area. We did a spin out out of semantic. This was started by um, when Greg Clark was there in, uh, in McKinsey in a company called CyberQ, which has uh, got a, another round to be able to establish themselves as one of the leaders in the space. So we we're pretty happy they were trying to impact. It's still not the problem is not solved because it's all about data, continuous OT, IT, OT, all, all the, that continues to, to deal with that. The third area, very consistent to what data, what Bob said about data, data is being weaponized, but we all started with, you know, hey, we're, we're trying to protect information and that is data that is processed by applications that run on a device, they run in a network. And I think the next frontier is data. I think we're beginning to get data visibility, uh, observability, how does it change, the identity, the privacy implications, the sovereignty of the data itself. So that's an area we still don't have really real investments. That's an area where we're spending a fair amount of time and, and, and effort to see what we're gonna do. And finally, like Sterling said, uh, identity. Identity is not solved. You know, I started the, my very first uh, identity company in 1995, like you, David, have been around and it's a company that, you know, we bootstrapped and eventually we almost took public and got uh, acquired by Entrust, but I've been in identity for almost 30 years. And uh, it's an area that, you know, still will continue to evolve and we need to know, and it's not just about individuals, it's about, the, uh, you know, containers, it's, it's about applications and everything else. So I think identity is one of those areas we continue to spend a fair amount of time. Yeah, great, great summary, Alberto. I, I can't agree more with what you said. The shift everywhere is my new, my new catchphrase for 2023, I think. Shift mm -hmm. left, right, and up. 
Uh, I can't yeah. figure out the shift down yet. I'll, I'll work on the shift down one. We've, we've been there, but uh, anyway, we'll figure it out. <laughs> Bob, I want you to talk about and the others here as well. You know, we got 7,000 cyber companies or so, give or take a few. You know, what, what does an investment look like in 2023? Is, is valuations changing? You know, we talked about three T's earlier, team tech and team. Yeah. You know, what, what's a perfect investment kind of look like in 2023 as companies, you probably see, I don't know how many companies a week, right? You know, between the three of you, like lots, like what would you invest in and what does it have to look like? Well, I, look, the, th the things that I'm thinking about are, um, you know, I like Nadav when he talks about T2, T5 and T10. Uh, I, in T2, I better be in it already. Uh, you know, T5 and T10 is what I'm thinking about. Uh, you know, it, it, when I think about T5, uh, you know, it's again, that, that my observation is that if you, if you look at offensive playbooks, uh, where the offense is today will end up as sort of a mainstream threat in, in a period of four to six years, typically. So that T5 time frame becomes really important. So those are the things that I'm, that I'm thinking about. Um, and, and, and so what am I looking for? I'm looking, you know, look, I'll, I'll tell you, it's cyber is not a pickup game. You either do this 100% of the time or you don't do it at all. It moves too damn fast. It's too complex. You can't learn it on the job. And, and part of the dynamic that we've got in the, in the investment community today is that the venture community has done what the venture community always does. When it identifies a, an area of hot growth, it piles in both entrepreneurs and venture capitalists. And what it does is it tends to overcapitalize me to commoditize technology and undercapitalizes the truly differentiated uh, stuff that's going to move the needle. So I, I think all, all of us today, all four of us today, are focused on that, that next horizon, the T5 stuff. And that's going to come from folks that have got very deep domain expertise that have built their careers in cyber. They understand the threat. In many cases, they will have created the threat. They understand the playbooks, they understand the vulnerabilities, they understand the gaps and the holes. So when I'm looking at things, I'm looking for principally teams coming out of offense that created the threats that, that think like hackers, and as a result, understand the mindset of the attacker and can build effective countermeasures, both from a psychological perspective as well as a technical perspective. Uh, and, and so you know, in, in my particular case, I don't find a lot of those in Silicon Valley. Uh, I find more of those, frankly, uh, if, if I look at what we do at Data Tribe in Maryland or other areas where expertise is coming out of national intelligence, particularly offensive expertise coming out of national intelligence. I think the other thing that, that I think about when I'm looking at things today is I fundamentally believe that most cyber threats will turn out to be data science problems. We, we talked about weaponization of data. Uh, that leads me to things like data provenance. Those are fundamentally data science-based solutions. Uh, and so I spent a lot of time looking for that expertise. Uh, now, those tend to be a little more towards T10, uh, just because when you talk about solving those problems, the, the timelines to affect the technology and to move that technology into workflows and into how we do things, uh, it, it takes a long time. Nadav, and I both have companies in, in the homomorphic encryption area. Uh, this is going to be a fundamentally critical approach to how data is managed going forward. But it's not like we wake up one day and homomorphic encryption is everywhere. But we're going to start with initial use cases where there is an absolute mandate for that technology to be able to secure the data that is in use. Uh, and it will eventually roll through the broader you know, segment of the marketplace and will become, I, I believe fundamentally, how data is managed going forward. I mean, one of the things we think about, you know, in security, we spend a lot of time just securing our infrastructure and securing our applications. And that's all terribly important, right? But fundamentally, I go back to, I always ask the question, what's the mouse after? The mouse is after the cheese. The mouse is not trying to wander through your house because he wants to wander through your house. The mouse is after the cheese. The cheese is data. Secure the damn cheese, right? And, and so this is where you get to this concept of data-centric security. It, it feeds into this weaponization of data. It's all part of data providence. Um, I, I think that's, you know, that's the big thing that I think about today. What I Love think it. out to T5, T10. 
I'll make that my new uh, tagline, secure the cheese. I got that. That's, uh, I love it. <laughs> I love it. Now, like Nadav, it. maybe over to you for a minute. I'm curious as well, you know, not just what you're seeing, but also just talk a little bit from an evaluation point of view. We just came out of a couple year period where founders were kind of kings and queens, right? They could almost dictate lots of things. We saw some companies go from zero to billion valuations almost overnight. We see the same climate, Nadav, in 2023. What's your view on that? I mean, early stage is a little different, right? Well, as we say, uh, 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 as we say in the Middle East, thanks Allah for that change. Uh, uh, <laughs> and uh, alhamdulillah, it doesn't go back. You know, I, I don't think 21 was a good year for uh, for cybersecurity. You know, as Bob said, everybody jumped in. Uh, um, early stage is tough. Early stage is understanding the complexity of the technology. Early stage is taking big bets in the future, as, as we say, when we look at T5 and T10. Uh, and when the money became so abundant that you we, we had just <clears throat> bundles of money thrown at early stage, for us as a foundry, that was very tough. Because at the end of the day, um, you know, at, at myself, uh, uh, Bob, Alberto, at the end of the day, we compete for one thing and one thing only, and that's the best founders in the world. We don't compete uh, uh, for the enterprise business. There's a lot of it. We don't even compete for the money. We're top tier VCs. We're usually oversubscribed when we go in and, and raise capital. But there's only a limited amount of really experienced, humble leaders that can really be the, the founders and leaders of these companies. And I agree about the triple T, but if, if I know nothing else about the market and nothing else about the technology, the only thing I will look at is the leadership and the CEO, because they'll figure out the market. They'll yep. figure out the technology, they'll change, they'll pivot. If you haven't got the leader, nothing's gonna happen. At a foundry model, that's even more critical because we built the company with the leaders. And so for us, uh, you know, mid 22, um, and as we go into 23, the sanity that's coming back to the market is actually a sigh of relief because now we can have serious discussions with our, uh, our founders and leaders about what we want to build, how do we impact the world, what it's going, what what is it going to take, um, and there's the noise I think is going down. And honestly, and you know, this is unfortunate. There is going to be probably almost an epic, uh, uh, um, you know, devaluation and even erasing of capital that went into into these industry in this industry in the last couple of years. Ultimately, as we look at our business, I think it's a good thing, especially for very early stage and dramatically for a foundry model. By the way, Nadav, I can't agree more. I've talked a lot about this, having been investing for a while too now. You know, that bull market was quite a market when it came to investing, right? And, you know, at least Night Dragon's case, we were very fortunate. Single digit entry multiples we were able to get for companies growing 60, 70 percent. Wow, do I see this as an even better investment window coming up in 2023? And, you know, I, I do one of these, too. Like, it's a good it's a good thing. We needed a little bit of this contraction, humility to come back. This gives investors yeah. and opportunities to make more money. Alberto, bring us home and give us your perspective. You know, what is a, what does a perfect company look like investing in, in 2023? I, I agree with everything that has been said. You know, I think is that it, besides the, you know, the domain expertise, the team and the experience is also really understanding that nothing goes in a straight line <laughs> you know that and you know expect the unexpected and and we're partners we, we we are there with them in the good times and the bad times so that's what we pride ourselves we're, we pride ourselves of being company builders and being next to our founders it is very refreshing indeed to see a lot of uh, the tourist investors that came in our industry leaving because now we're, we're having a normalization of the market it's not like the market is down we're becoming to the normal market that we always lived. And we lived through multiple, you know, cycles, 2000, 2001, 2008, and now we're going to another one. Many of these founders have never even been in, in business for that long. So for us, you know, it's, it's business as usual. This is where great companies get built. There's a lot of resilience. And I think it's all about, you know, making sure you listen to the customer, make it delight, delight the customer, make sure that your technologies are easy to consume, easy to deploy. We learn a lot about 
predictability of revenue is now about margins. And, you know, I think we, the industry has matured. I think there'll be plenty of opportunities for us to invest in both early stage and companies that actually have to come back to the market and have to get uh, to recap, recapitalize. And uh, I think there will be great opportunities to get into great companies where some of their early investors will not be there to support them and, 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 and continue to build those teams before we had to walk away because those valuations were not, you know, not something that we were willing to chin up because we have a simple saying, the, the price of entry determines the multiple of exit. And if the four of us run uh, a venture fund, our customers, our shareholders, our LPs, and they want returns. So something that they really understand is the price of entry determines the multiple of exit. So we are, we pride ourselves on being fair. We're not saying the value is a function of, you know, the, the, the beholder, but at the same time, we lived in a, about 18 to 24 months where the, 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 the valuations were, were way, way, way too high. So I feel very, very excited uh, and, uh, and optimistic that the industry will continue to thrive and there'll be a, a bunch of consolidations. The, the established companies will still need to, uh, in order to stay relevant and competitive, they're gonna have to acquire, they're gonna have to acquire core IP and many, there will be the exit of some companies that they will not have funding, but I think that the overall industry will continue to grow. You know, you know, Dave, Alberto made a great point there, just to amplify, this is when great companies get started in down cycles. The bar is so much higher. So the quality of the team, the quality of the idea, the efficiency demanded of a startup, this is when great companies will get started. This is a $400 billion a year business. I started out saying that with $6 trillion in losses per year. This is the biggest asymmetric theater we've ever seen. And like you said, Bob, it's not a pickup game. You don't understand what the threats are. You don't understand what T2, T5, T10 mean. It's a tough world to exist from investments. You know, the tourism game is probably over here for a while. Um, gentlemen, thank you for coming in. Bob, great to see you. Nadav, Alberto, my friends, thank you. Love you guys so much. Happy New Year and best of luck to you in 2023. Thank you Appreciate so much. Appreciate it, Dave. Thank Save you. Well. Take care of yourselves. Thank, thank you. you. All right, we're going to take another one minute break, just one minute, and we're going to go into our fifth panel. We have some amazing titans coming in, BJ and Kelly. So one minute break, and we'll be right back. Thank